good, you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. So why do we cook bacon but bake cookies? That's an interesting question. Oh, hey, question. you made it. Glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your hosts, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Colby. And what are we going to be talking about today, Nuria? So today is another very interesting topic, and it's business versus busyness. So I think there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I will say early on in my business, uh, I definitely uh, fell into the whole you know, where I was just focusing uh, focusing on busyness, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's really at least that topic to me means um, what you're doing is it just to keep yourself busy, or is it actually accomplishing something for your business? And I think that's a really big thing to to differentiate for people. Yes, I agree, and it's actually something that has come to the forefront in my business a lot recently because. I'm trying to streamline things a little bit and I'm, I realize that I'm doing things because I'm used to doing them or I'm in a routine and I've always been doing it mm -hmm. that way. And then I think about it and I think, why am I actually doing this? What is this contributing to my business? Is this contributing in a way that is helping, is, is pushing my business forward? Or am I just going with emotions and not, not really thinking about it? And I found that I do a lot of things because I'm just used to doing them. It's it's something I've carried over from past businesses or past, um, you know, just things that I used to do. And they're not right. really worth my time now. So <laughs> it's really a matter of finding the things that you do. Are they pushing things forward or, or are you just doing them? And, and I've actually i've decided there's a lot of things i don't need to do anymore because they're just not not pushing things forward yeah i i agree and i, and I think you really um, hit the nail on the head with you know a lot of it can be things that you're just used to you know familiarity you know things that you're yeah. you know maybe it was improving your business early on when you first started but now you're just doing it out of habit, habit rather than out of actually benefiting your business. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that, you know, I, I, I talk about a lot is the fact that, you know, I use a checklist and things like that. And, you know, a lot of people may be like, well, I use a checklist. Like he said, I use one and, uh, and I've got all these things accomplished. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're really working on your business. You know, how many of those things on your checklist are really moving the needle? for your, for your business, you know, or, or are they just, are you just going through the motions? I mean, if you think about how many times, you know, you're maybe you're quote researching something and you're researching it on YouTube, you know, if you spent four hours on YouTube, is that how much of that is really research and how much of that is just getting sucked into, you know, to the portal that is YouTube, you know? And, uh, and I mean, I've fallen victim to that many times, you know, where I have all the best of intentions, and then I just, and, and even if it is something that is still related to the business, you know, did you, did that, you know, four hours you spent, how much did that really help your business? And, you know, we all have a finite amount of time in the day, you know, we all have the same 24 hours. And so it's a matter of finding out, you know, what you can keep in, you know, in your routine and what can you pull out because it's just not benefiting your business either it's not benefiting at all or not benefiting it as much as using that time you know better served elsewhere yeah i absolutely agree and what you just said really um kind of rang a bell with me because it's so true you start researching especially if you're in the kind of business we're in where we're creating content all the time you have to research and you research on the places that you actually work on on that you're using so youtube mm -hmm. is one of them or facebook and 
those are the two places that for me are like a rabbit hole where I just <laughs> I go in there and before you know it I've watched 10 cat videos and I don't know what else and it's nothing to do with the business <laughs> and it's like taking mm -hmm. my time and I have to be I do consciously try not to do that because I know what I'm like and I I go into other areas and it wastes time but the other thing I found and it's actually quite beneficial sometimes because you are researching and you suddenly go into a different area of something and without realizing you've discovered something that could be of benefit for your business. So right. there is that side to it as well. There is a, a side where sometimes you just have to let your your mind wander and, and do what it mm -hmm. wants to do because that kind of creates new ideas and new new um, directions as well for your business so it's it's not all bad I think it's um right. it, it's something to be aware of and just to to make sure that you don't overdo the busyness rather than the 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 sort of um targeted business you know I I find it helps right. me a lot if I if I've got a plan and I say right today I want to achieve this or I want to to get this done and that kind of steers me back in the right direction but yeah, it's very easy to to get lost in in a mountain of information. But it's not all bad. So I don't yeah. want to say that it's um, something you need to avoid at all cost because sometimes it actually helps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I mean, and there really are you know no absolutes. You know, nothing is a hundred percent one way or the other. Um, and you know, and I'm not even saying that you know we're not allowed to have downtime. You know, you're absolutely allowed to have downtime. But, um, but what you said is really, um, I, I think a key takeaway is being, be mindful of what you're doing. You know, um, it, it's one thing if you're, if you're doing it, you know, I'm going to spend, you know, I, I've worked a lot today. I'm going to spend an hour just watching cat videos, you know, then that's fine. Go for it. You know, or I'm going to go on here and I'm going to spend four hours researching. That's fine. But it, again, it's being mindful of, you know, as you're watching these videos, are they are they giving you new ideas? Are they you know inspiring you to to just work hard or whatever? You know if if they're accomplishing something for your business, then that's fine. But again, it's about being mindful of you know okay, how much of this really is is me staying on track versus me getting sucked into the algorithm and you know of whatever the platform happens to be. And again, I, I really think that what you said about it, about being mindful of it and. And always being mindful of it, you know, you know, video to video or or group to group if you're on social media. And I think what you said is is very true. I mean, those platforms are all designed to suck you in. <laughs> so they know exactly mm -hmm. what they're doing. Right. And it's very easy to fall into that trap and to do something completely different to what you started out to do. But um, I think, you know, as long as you do all the things or you'll prioritize the things that you are supposed to do and then it doesn't matter so much if you do lose yourself a little bit but also the other thing is I approach each day as a new day so if I wasted my time yesterday I don't think about it too much I just today's a new day and I carry on and and make up for it today so sometimes you have to look at things over a longer period of time sometimes you can't say well today was a waste of time today I didn't do this I do look at it as mm -hmm. the whole week then you know what have you achieved in that right. week? there's always time to catch up and to do other things and every day is a new day so you know it's not too tragic I mean when I looked at this topic and I thought about it a little bit I thought yes it really rings true to me because I recognize that I recognize that I am busy sometimes but it's not really benefiting the business as such or I don't think it's mm -hmm. benefiting the business and that's when you need to rein it in and and to think okay let's let's go back to reality and let's go and produce right. something uh, positive, you know. But it's, mm -hmm. I mean, each individual is different as well. And it, and you will all, anyone who's listening will know the way they react to things. Some people are very organized and very focused. And others, like me, are a little bit more, they get distracted easily. <laughs> so, right. you know, what are you, what type yeah. of person are you, Keith? Do you get distracted easily or... Um, are you I'm, a, I'm a little bit of both. Um, 
I, I do, I do get distracted very easily, which is why I try to be very structured. Um, yeah. You know, as that's, that's the mindfulness that we were talking about. That's what, I, because I'm mindful of, of how I normally am, you know, that it's easy for me to have five or six things going at the same time that I, I intentionally try to, to rein that in by doing things like a checklist and, you know, stuff like that. And, and I agree with you that, you know, if you have a, you know, an off day or whatever, and you realize, okay, yesterday wasn't as, you know, as productive as it could have been, you know, tomorrow's a new day, not a big deal. Um, I, I think it's more of going back to the mindfulness and, and, and thinking, like you said, long-term of your business is, is, you know, the checklist that I have or the steps that I do, you know, how much of it is something that I've just been doing since the beginning and therefore I do it out of habit and I do it out of comfortability. And, and it may be something that productively it's helping me because, because I'm more familiar with it. I, I know it better. So I, you know, I'm faster at it, but if you learn something new, then it may take you longer in the short term, you know, to, to learn it or, or whatever, or to, or to start doing that. But in the long term, like you were saying, look at it, you know, you know, step, you know, look at it from a high level. Is it going to be more beneficial? You know, um, an example is I use, I use PowerPoint for, you know, for creating my children's books. That is definitely not the most efficient way to do it. You know, um, that's not the, I mean, there are plenty of softwares out there that are made for creating books, but PowerPoint is what I was familiar with. And so I've been doing it since 2016 that way. Um, I purchased, and we talked about this in a, in a previous episode when we talked about shiny object syndrome, but um, you know, I purchased a software that is made for creating books and I've had it for uh, like a year and a half and I still haven't used it because I don't know it. Like I know PowerPoint. But in the long run, it will definitely benefit my business because it, I, I'll, it'll be more flexible, you know, because that's what it's made for. Uh, there won't be as many clicks that I have to do because I'm basically treating PowerPoint in a way it wasn't designed to be used for, you know. Um, and so things like that, like, you know, the, you know, I have to go in every time and change the trim size because, again, it's made for slides. It's not made for, you know, pages. So uh, that's one of those things where, you know, if I were to say, okay, that's it, I'm going to start working and using this software, that wouldn't be busyness, you know, keep, even though I'd be busier than I normally would be in the long run, it's helping my business. So it's also, like you said, you know, looking at it from a, from a higher level and saying, you know, it, it's one thing if I'm just wasting my time, am I just, you know, playing with a tool that, that really isn't helping my business or something that in the long run is going to help it. So that's, again, something to, to keep in mind. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting point that made me think now because I I used to use PowerPoint for books and then I switched over to Canva. And with Canva, you have the same controversy. You know, people are saying, Canva is mm-hmm. no good for books. You shouldn't be creating books in Canva, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I'm making my books in Canva and they're coming out fine and I've absolutely got no problem with it. So why should I really change? Just because people say that's mm-hmm. not for books. I disagree. I think sometimes you have to do things and to get things done. It's, a, it's you know, whichever mm-hmm. way you, you want to get them done. But as long as you get them done, do it your way. Do right whatever you need to do. But you brought up an an interesting point here and you said, well, if you start learning about this new software that you acquired, which I acquired too, I know we both know which one we're talking about. Right. And just for whoever's listening, we're talking about Affinity and um, we both bought it and it's sitting there gathering dust and not doing much. But I know that I really do want to learn about it and use it. And you obviously are thinking on the same lines and one right. day we'll do it. <laughs> and, and hopefully after we've learned about it, we'll think, why did we not do this before? You know, but you just never know. And in the meantime, we just have a workaround really to, to running our business by creating our books on something that may not have been designed for book creation, but that's working really well for us. So 
I'm not complaining, but I do see your point. You know, if we started learning about it now, it would seem like we're not producing anything because we're learning. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's one of the things that I love about this business is that every day I learn something different. And yes, I do spend time on that, but it's so valuable because it does, it just pushes you along to something else, you know. So it, it reminds me a little bit of the time when I first started when I closed down my jewellery business and I decided I wanted to do blogging because I didn't have to have boxes of inventory in my house and I could just do it online and it seemed so easy. And um, I had to to learn everything about WordPress and I think anybody who knows, who's tried to to make a website with WordPress knows how how tricky that can be. (laughs) And and I hadn't a clue and I Googled everything. So I spent about a year or two, well, a year, I would say, just building my blog, building my website. And I always felt it was time wasted. I'm not producing anything. I'm not, you know, I'm busy. I'm working hours and hours and hours and I'm not getting anywhere. But now right. that's come in really handy because now I can build my website. I can do so many things that I didn't know how to do before. So, yes, I was busy and not I didn't have a business, but it's now helped me to create the business I have now. So there's all pros and cons, really, to think about, you know, that to me, that was right. thinking back. Yes, I was busy doing nothing or, or creating nothing, but it comes it kicks in after a while i think sometimes mm-hmm. so yeah yeah so so yeah so you were still you were again you were still working on your business and a lot of it is just perception you yeah. know and i i definitely agree with what you were saying before about you know um I, i'm not saying that you should change what you're doing um because of what somebody else says yeah. um it's more of just just taking a, a going back to the whole being mindful you know being mindful and looking at what you're doing um the steps you take you know, your process, uh, you know, from, from the moment you quote clock in for the day, you know, what are you doing for your business? And, and then just saying, okay, is, is this something that either short-term or long-term is helping the business or is it just something that is keeping me busy? You know, is this a 30 minutes or an hour that I can spend doing something else? You know, like perfect example is even when I, when I used to go into the office, you know, Every Monday morning, it was spent around the uh, the coffee maker, and you know we'd sit there for five or ten minutes and just talk about the weekend. Was that being busy or was it helping my you know the the business? Um, it was being busy, but but it was also helping the business in that it was getting that um, you know everybody you know strives for that human connection, you know, that in- interaction with other human beings. And so if you literally just go into your office and sit down and just start working and you don't, and you eliminate that from yourself, you're going to be more, at least me, I'll be more susceptible to get sucked into other things um, to kind of feed into that need to, to communicate, whether it's just someone asking me a question and instead of a quick answer, you know, I spend 10 minutes talking about it, you know, Whereas if I'd have just spent that five, 10 minutes at the beginning of the day on a Monday chatting everybody up and, you know, talking about, you know, the weekend, you know, I probably would have already, you know, gotten that out of my system and then been able to focus more. Mm -hmm. So even little things like that, like just spending five, 10 minutes chatting with somebody, you know, um, I, I think depending on what you're chatting about and and how long that goes, it, it can be both busyness and still help your business. So um, there is no right or wrong or, or, you know, short answer that, you know, we can just say, hey, this is it and this is the key. Uh, it's really just a matter of going back to what we said before and being mindful, you know, making, making the decisions, doing what you do while it may be second nature and, you know, have it because you've been doing it for so long. And that's a good thing because that makes you more efficient in theory because, you know, you're, you're doing these steps. But... Every once in a while, just stepping back and saying, okay, why am I doing this? Is this helping my business? And it could be something that is helping your business, but you don't enjoy doing or you're not the best at. Maybe you want to outsource it, you know, mm-hmm. find somebody else who can do that. And then you can be doing something else at that same time. Yeah. We can do a whole nother episode on, <laughs> on when and how to outsource. But, um, but yeah, that's, again, just another thing to, to keep in mind is, you know, busyness versus business. 
absolutely yeah you made some really good points there the one thing I liked that you just said as well was that sense of connection that people are looking for you know the five minutes spent around the coffee machine in the office and I think you know we're in different countries but we do the same things <laughs> we we always you know gather around the coffee machine and and have a little chat and I think that's why in our business when we work online that's where Facebook groups come in because that's where people kind of connect with each other and it's it's like we haven't got any colleagues I mean I look at um, other uh, publishers as co as colleagues really like I look at you as a colleague I look at all the other youtubers as as colleagues because we're kind of in the same in the same business but um, other people that are following us they may not have that connection they they're sitting at home doing it by themselves and I realize that Facebook groups or any kind of forums are good for for that kind of thing it's like the coffee machine place that people gather in and they can ask questions that are related to to the business and I think that is important and I know sometimes I say to myself I should spend less time in Facebook groups but it is what it is it's it's a way to connect with people that are doing the same things I guess well I mean no I, I think you brought up a really good point you know that um you know that that there is nothing wrong with you know th with the social media and there's nothing wrong with um you know chatting you know chatting up your like you call them your colleagues you know uh, just because yeah. i mean the the company i work for for my uh my quote real job my full-time job um you know we we're an international company and so i i have colleagues all over the world um i have eight employees that work for me and those eight employees cover three different continents. And so, yeah, I mean, they're still colleagues. And, and so I agree with you that, you know, interacting with social on social media, again, it's just, it's just about being mindful, you know, you know, chatting up because I, I make a point, I, I run three uh, Facebook groups and, you know, obviously I go in and I, you know, go into all three of them every day or Monday through Friday and, you know, answer questions and things like that. But I'm mindful that I don't just get sucked in there for, you know, two hours. Cause like you said early on in this episode, you know, that's these, these social media platforms that, you know, they have algorithms, they, they're, they're businesses. So they know what they're doing. They're designed to suck you in. They're designed to mm -hmm. suggest another group that might be related to that group or suggest another video or, or whatever. Yeah. And so, um, again, I, I, I just think, and I know I keep repeating this like a, you know, like a, uh, like a robot just saying the same thing over but um, I really think that being mindful is is a really good takeaway um, absolutely because yeah. like like you said earlier there is no there's no one size fits all when it comes to busyness versus business you know um, yeah. you may be doing something that to one person looks like you're you know you're just doing busy work you're not actually helping your business but maybe you are conversely mm -hmm. you know outside looking in you may look like you're just you know, knocking things out left and right. And you really at the end of the day or at the end of the week or at the end of the month, haven't really done anything to help your business, you know? And so it, it really just comes down to, um, and I'm not saying this is something you should look at every single day, but I, I think that just every once in a while is taking a step back and saying, you know, what I'm working on, is it really helping my business? You know, a great example, like you talked about earlier was the fact that, you know, um, you know, are, are you someone who kind of gets brought into a bunch of different things and gets easily distracted? And, and I am. And that's one reason why shiny object syndrome was a great episode to talk about. Um, but, um, but you know, I, I currently have five books in, in different levels of being written, you know, am I helping my business by having five different books or should I literally just focus my energy on one book at a time, you know? Um, and, and that's something that, you know, honestly, everybody will have an opinion on, but really I can only answer that for myself and for my business. And so, um, you know, those are, those are things that, that you do, you need to look at from, you know, a high level every once in a while, not all the time, but look at it and say, okay, what, what on my plate, what am I working on that really is helping my business? Um, especially as you start seeing that you're maybe working too much. You know, if your significant other is telling you, you know, you're spending too much time working on the business or whatever, that's when you, that's a good time to really step back and say, okay, I am spending all this time working on the business, but how much 
is actually benefiting the business. Not, I mean, like you said earlier, not necessarily benefiting it now. You know, working on a website is still benefiting your business, even though you don't have anything to show for it at this time. You know, so not to take away from from the little things that add up to something big. But again, you know, sp I, how much time do you spend checking emails? You know, I, I know a lot of people in in this business, uh, you know, uh, the, pu the publishing business, as well as, you know, YouTubers that literally have a, you know, they set 30 minutes to check their emails in the morning. That's it. You know, if if they don't get through all their emails in 30 minutes, then the ones that they didn't get to will be the first ones they'll get to the next day, you know, yeah. and, and literally making clear cutoffs like that can be a great way to save you time, even though, yes, it's still helping your business. If I continue to reply to every single one of those comments or every single one of those those emails. But is your, you know, is there something else that's that will help your business even better today? you know, versus something helping your business long term. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with everything you just said there. <laughs> and uh, that reminds me, I've got to check my email soon <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, this has been another great mastermind, Naria. We want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of our listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, it'll mean the world to us. If you follow or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite listening platform. And while you're at it, go on and leave us a review. I just saw next week's topic, Nuria, and it looks like it's another good one. I'm really looking forward to that one. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, until next week, I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Corby. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining the Mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.